All right, so let's talk about what appears to be the big story in the NFL preseason, which is Dak Prescott's six total yeah. touchdowns, five incompletions. Jason, is it fool's gold? I'm, I'm generally one uh, to pump the brakes on anything that happens between, oh, I don't know, OTAs in May. Between May and July through August, I, I, I generally am a bit of a skeptic, and I'm not going to crown this kid yet, but I am going to say what I tweeted the other day, which is this kid will be sort of a national story coming out of this entire preseason. You know, you think Tony Romo plays, I don't know, maybe a half of week three, but – of the preseason, and then there'll be plenty more for Prescott in week four. I just wonder if at a certain point they put him under bubble wrap as well because clearly he is the number two there. They believe, and I believe, he can be and maybe already is better than a lot of sort of the veterans you're going to find on the street. And would I rather have Dak Prescott right now going into his third preseason game or Nick Foles going into his fourth organization or whatever it is, uh, at least third, right? I, I, give me, give me some of Prescott. Uh, there's a lot to see there. Um, there's a lot of people excited, and we know that Jerry Jones and Stephen Jones sometimes can get a little overexcited and lose perspective. But I was at the game in L.A. the first game he played, and just watching from that press box, there were ball. You, you would see the ball come out of his hand. You would see the the, the, the touchdown pass to Williams down the sideline before that ball hit it, its arc and started sort of coming down on the other end of the parabola. You could already tell, like, that's a perfect throw four yards into the end zone. Like, that's, that's a touchdown if this guy holds on to the ball. I mean, these were not sort of fluky plays. And yeah, Dez is going to make plays for you if you're willing, to, especially in the situation he's in, to put it where you need to put it to let that guy go up and battle. And a lot of young quarterbacks won't do that. They're afraid to throw that interception there. Um, this kid's an athlete. He's got some Russell Wilson in him. He's got a little Aaron Rodgers in him. Maybe he turns out to be uh, uh, just a guy. But there is a lot of clay to mold there. And if he can stay on the straight and narrow and avoid some of the, the pitfalls of college life um, and, and some of his off-field issues from uh, that period of his life, there's a lot of upside there, man. That, that, that kid, he's, there's a little something there. You had me at parabola. Um, there you go. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I like that. That's why I'm here. You want to pump the brakes, but you throw out names like Aaron Rodgers. Um, it, it is – a thrilling story if you're a Cowboys fan because they were furious that they didn't trade up and grab Paxton Lynch, who, of course, went to the Broncos and who looked like, I thought, Saturday night watching my Broncos, like the best of the three quarterbacks. Trevor Simeon came out, solid start, clearly is not interested in throwing the long ball, but looked solid in the short game, and then he throws a pick six. In comes Mark Sanchez, throws some great balls, and then does Mark Sanchez things two fumbles, and I think three or four plays. He has 51 yeah. career fumbles. Do they rename Sports Authority Field first, or do they name a starting quarterback first, and who is it? I don't know that they're going to be in a rush to, to coronate someone now. I mean, I understand what Cleveland did with RG3, but that was a little different situation because what the, at the point they made that move, it was going to be RG3, and you want to empower that kid. Um if it was about, you know, Josh McCown, they wouldn't have gone out and got RG3. If Josh McCown was six or seven years younger, then they don't go out and get RG3. So that, that's a little different. This Broncos situation, all these guys need reps. It is really, truly a viable competition, and they're being evaluated from throw to throw in each practice and obviously in these games. And, and I've said all along that I'm not worried about who, who throws the first pass of the season for the Denver Broncos. That's a team that feels like it will get better through the season. That's a team that won a Super Bowl without a quarterback last year. And that's a team that feels like the kid they took in the first round has a lot of upside and always took him for a reason. So regardless of who throws the first pass there, I think the last pass of the season is thrown by Paxton Lynch. I think when you look at their overall pie chart for a number of reps under center when it's all said and done for this season, Lynch will be the far and away the clubhouse leader. Doesn't necessarily mean he has to start week one, but certainly he's being groomed to be ready to play in that offense sooner rather than later. Elway will be willing to take his lumps with that kid early, thinking that come November, you know, late November, early December, he's going to be far and away the best quarterback on our roster. If he's not already now, certainly through that learning curve of the first couple months of the season, he will be. And let's try to have this kid, this sort of weapon in our arsenal, this kid's athleticism, all the things we think he can, 
he can do to help us get a play here or a play there because that's all we really need. If this defense doesn't fall off precipitously, we just can't have butt fumbles. And, you know, we can't just hope and think that maybe we found something in Simeon. We're going to have to ride with this kid who, look, we, we valued as a first-rounder. And, again, can he just be better than or the same as Osweiler last year, this year, knowing that next year and the year after and the year after, we think he could be markedly better. That's your point. For all his deserved accolades, one of the great top five quarterbacks of all time, the Broncos won a Super Bowl with arguably one of the five worst quarterbacks in the league last year, a guy who I believe couldn't throw a 25-yard out. I, I think Gary Kubiak did not want him audibling anywhere near a pass in that Super Bowl. We're talking with Jason Locken for us, CBS Sports NFL reporter and NFL is back in LA, the Coliseum. We're not quite at the brand new, beautiful stadium that they'll unveil in a couple of years. What's their quarterback situation? And I know the fan base was really the story coming out of week two of the preseason. What is the picture of NFL back in LA? Well, like I said, I was at the first game against the Cowboys and they had just under 90,000 there. Uh, the infrastructure needs some work. If you're going to an L.A. Rams game, uh, get there early. And by early, I mean, you know, a good three and a half hours before kickoff if you can. Because uh, it, it is a bit of a nightmare getting in and out of there. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a bit of, I guess, an old school guy. I, I like the Coliseum. I think it's cool. There's so much history there. I mean, just, just the way that thing's built, some of the sight lines from the press box. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I think you could do worse than have to play whatever. 24. Well, actually, they're going to keep playing games in London. So whatever it turns out to be 21, you know, regular season games there over three years. Um, and, and, yeah, there's a lot of glitz and all that now, but that'll, that'll wear off. And if they don't win, they won't be hot forever. They just got to hope they can, you know, sustain for a couple of years until that stadium's built. As to their quarterback situation, I, I you know, I think it's, it, in some ways it could end up being tied to these extensions. I mean, Les Snead and, and Jeff Fisher aren't probably going anywhere. And they've been talking about new deals for a while. If they get them, then I could see them saying, let's just go with this kid golf because he's going to make or break how much of these extensions we actually get to coach and, and general manage through. If that's still up in the air, and I think they have a, a pretty bad San Francisco team week one, I think they try to win a couple games, get everybody in L.A. all rah rah up, and, and then you know, think maybe you know, a fast start and we get those extensions then. Uh, so I think that's probably in the back of everyone's mind. And Jerry Goff, just, he's, not, he's not ready yet. And, and will he be ready two weeks from now? No. But should he be able to close the gap on someone like a Chase Keenum over the course of the first month of the season, the uh, first six weeks of the season? Boy, I, I think he better. Not everyone is used to the NFL back in L.A. One of the refs uh, penalized St. Louis in this game yeah. when there was an ejection. Like they haven't been beat up enough. Yeah, leave <laughs> yeah, St. Louis the, alone. And the fans did not like that one bit. Um, under the radar story, you mentioned RG3. Who? What's the sneaky team to watch this year that we're not talking about? I have not been there yet myself. I'm still going to try to get there before camp closes. But just talking to other people who have been around that team, just my sort of take on that team last year, and my overall feelings about Jameis Winston, I don't hear a whole lot of buzz about Tampa, right? It's kind of like the Jags and the Raiders are hot, and then there's some who think the Vikings are sort of on this uh, steady climb to being, you know, a, a legitimate contender. I don't hear much about Tampa. Boy, I, I think that's a pretty good team in a mediocre division. Yes, they've got to bang heads with Carolina twice, but – I like the offensive line at a time in this league when no one's raving about anyone's offensive line. I love the young quarterback. I think he has sufficient weapons there. And I think just schematically and from an idea standpoint, uh, the defense will be addition by subtraction by getting rid of that old staff. Um, there, and there is some, some, obviously, some talent there already, McCoy and, and the like. I mean, there's some guys who've done some things in the league. I, I think they'll get that back end playing better. I think Tampa is kind of a scary team that I don't, I mean, I, again, it's hard. maybe I'm the wrong guy to ask because as you're traveling this much, you, you kind of feel like you're in a vacuum sometimes, but I don't get the sense that they're this sexy sort of pick, but I think they could be a playoff team. Jason is headed to Eagles camp and Giants and Jets, a must follow on Twitter. Also read them on CBSSports.com. One quick thing before we go, and it's the Patriots. Deion Lewis, are you hearing anything about that injury, how long they expect him to be out? No, I haven't heard anything uh, specific just yet. But obviously, 
you know, that's a situation where coming off how much time he's missed and some of his injury history in the past, even before he got to New England, he was a guy who, you know, would flash but have trouble staying on the field. Obviously, there's there's going to be some concern there, and, and he's someone who in that offense has been, uh, a, I mean, he's not been a guy. He's been an absolute difference maker some Sunday. So any prolonged absence by him coupled with Brady's situation, and then obviously, you know, we've seen Gronk hobbled here and there. Uh, not not the ideal way to start the season. But I don't still win that division. I agree there. I should I should mischaracterize. I said it was an injury. I believe it was not a new injury. It was just cleaning out the, the knee and surgery did not necessarily take. This might just be a little bit of a cleaning out. Might miss a little time. But Jason yeah, Lock and got, I mean, his knee his knee history is 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 long and deep, unfortunately. Yeah, some some injury issues in Foxborough. Jason Lock and Four, appreciate you joining us. Grab a cheesesteak in Philly and talk to you again with the Giants and Jets. You got it. Thanks, buddy. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.